Good morning guys! Today I am going to share another day in the life of the violin maker. I've been on holidays so this week I actually don't have any clients. I had a couple earlier in the week but that's it. Uh, so I'm focusing on a bunch of interesting projects. One of the things I did already, we already had a planning meeting to plan some of my videos and some of the work that's coming up and that was at one of my favorite cafes, which is great. Some of the things I have to do is I have to set up uh, two Pierlemont Master Violins. Uh, people ordered them while I was on holiday, so I really want to get them sent to the players. One is in the US and one is local here from Brisbane. Um, I'm also setting up a cello for someone who bought a cello from New South Wales here in Australia. And, um, I'm working on my new violin, so that's exciting. And also I am working on a, the flood cello I've been working on. It's an interesting repair. I'm, I'm working on, on it quite slowly, sort of step by step, but um, that's actually just down here. Uh, I My shop area, I can have tools and things scattered because I don't have clients coming in, which is great. All right, so I'm gonna get started. And today I think the first thing I will do is just look at my violin and just work a tiny bit on my violin because, uh, you know, that'll give me a good feeling. And uh, before anything at all, I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. So I, uh, I've got a little special bench that I created uh, that juts out from my normal workbench and gives me a bit of space to work. Check this out. And uh, now I just have to get into it. So I'm looking at getting that shape of the arching right on the back so that it can be a really good reflector. This is a beautiful piece of wood, uh, but it's cut on the slab. So it's um, the timber is cut in a different way than uh, normally a, uh, the wood is cut out of like if you imagine like a, a block just cut out of a tree. So you've got the big round tree like this and then just a block cut out of it. Um, no, it doesn't become a toilet roll. Um, <laughs> um, and then normally it's cut like, you, you cut, they cut like cake slices out of it. And then the timber looks a bit like this. This timber is actually uh, bought that in Italy 20 years ago. So that'll be nice to use. So you can actually see the way it's been cut out of the, the stem of the timber. Whereas uh, this piece of wood has been cut, like they literally just cut it through the stem, like do, 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 do. It's just cut it up like boards. And it, it creates this really beautiful, these really beautiful kind of wild flames. And usually the instruments tend to have a very slightly deeper, richer sound as well when they cut on this slab because the grain and the reflector is different. It doesn't have that sharp bounce back of the tone. So, but still a very beautiful sound. There's, there's a lot of instruments uh, around that where the back has been cut off this on the slab. Some good Achnini violins and, and, and other ones. So it's just a very nice looking, it'll be a very nice looking back when I varnish it. And you'll get to see it anyway. All right, I'm gonna be working on that um, that cello soon, the, the flood cello, but I have to turn my glue on. And I keep my glue boiling, not boiling, I keep it at about sort of 70, 80 degrees um, Celsius throughout the day. A lot of the water evaporates very quickly. I'll top up the water and the glue. So I'm turning on my glue and I'm topping up the water. Something I have to do multiple times a day. And occasionally I'll put my coffee into the water bath as well to keep it hot. I don't want to drink too much coffee, otherwise I'm too wired. Um, so I sip, sip on my bulletproof coffee slowly throughout the morning. So it gets cold. So I just put it in the water bath for my glue for 
three minutes and it'll heat up again. Anyway, it's still warm now. Now, of course, I'm not only, um, you know, I do my work here, but I am also a YouTuber. Uh, it's not my main thing. I, I mean, I'm called a YouTuber, but I mean, my main goal is to really help string players. And so YouTube's been a wonderful forum for me to be able to share what I do. I think as a string player, you should really know as much as possible about your instrument. You should know how it works. And you should know some of the basics about the setup, you know, the string spacing, string heights and things like that. Because not every person working on violins knows, like here in Australia, we've got actually really nice looking shops. Um, you know, you go in there and you think, wow, this is this is a nice violin shop. Uh, you know, that we've got one that's set in a beautiful old church with city views. And, you know, and there's, there's some that just look, they just look the part, but they don't actually employ trained violin makers. Like, n n they don't employ violin makers with formal training. So sometimes the some of the measurements can be just a little bit off or even you can see some of the skill levels aren't quite there. So it's always a bit of a compromise. That's, that's here in Australia. I'm sure it happens around the world. It, you know, it's not that easy to get violin making training. So by being a more educated string player, you can find out if your violin maker actually knows what they're talking about, or if they're a real violin maker, or if they're a violin maker uh, that has, you know. And so we've got a lot of self-trained people working in these wonderful-looking shops. If they're not self-trained, they may have been trained by someone who's self-trained. Like I've, uh, there's one shop that's literally employing four generations, like four like like teacher student 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 but the teacher at the front was self-trained self-taught and so and you can learn a lot being self-taught but you've got to do it right uh, and so there's quite often just something not quite right and I'm a bit of a perfectionist I like things to be perfect by doing these videos I'm able to share with you how things should be when they're done right and I think as a string player, you really need to know because you can't tell when you walk into a shop, you can't really tell if they are, you know, sometimes if they really do have a professional maker employed. Anyway, that's enough of my rant. So that's why I do the YouTube channel. And so by being a YouTuber, one of the things that I have to do is thumbnails. I have to think about you know all these other things my editor is going to come down and help me do thumbnails uh this morning so that's going to be my next job this morning okay so i'm just setting up lighting and everything here we go i just have these two lights so they illuminate my face uh, i need to change my t-shirt because i want one with my logo on it uh, so i'm gonna do that okay so this is my daughter and editor who's gonna help me thanks for your help <laughs> All right, I've done my surprise look, shock look, and a few others. Uh, I might just change my shirt again. I do like this shirt. It's just new, and I got it in blue, which is one of my favorite colors, but I was wearing the other shirt, so I'll pop back over and get changed. Ta -da! <laughs> anyway. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to check over this cello that I'm working on here. It's a flood cello and uh, it's, it literally, it was fully immersed in water and came apart. Uh, this happened a little while ago and uh, unfortunately it's been a quite a slow process, but I really want to get it finished now so the player can get their instrument back. So at the moment I am slowly bending the ribs back into place because they had uh, they had changed shape, um, especially down here. This was really open. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm I'm just going to glue on this this lining now. So I've just got to get a whole lot of clamps and basically clamp it into place. Um, I'm going to use different clamps for around to to keep the ribs in place. 
so that I can place other clamps in between. These, these are quite large, so I'll get the small ones. So my goal here is to line up the ribs with the back. You can see by the glue marks that it's not lining up. Okay, I got my glue here. So now it's just a matter of putting glue on the rib itself and then onto the lining. I also got my clamps ready. I'm just gonna fix the lining on about in about two or three places. I'm gonna put down a little bit of PVC just to make sure I don't um, damage the varnish. That's, that's my magpie. There you go, little guy. Come on. Those babies are just so cute. Anyway, I've got to keep gluing before the glue turns to jelly. <laughs> okay, so that's done. I'm going to leave that to dry. And now I'd better start setting up some of these instruments because I do want to send them this week. Okay, so next I'm setting up a cello and I need to plane the fingerboard because it has to have the right shape. It's a bit hard putting a whole cello on my workbench, so I'm just putting it on a chair in front of my workbench. Okay, that's a good starting point. Now I just have to fit it more exactly. I better give the chisel a bit of a buff after the holiday. Okay, that'll be better. It's not the ideal way to do it, but it's a quick way to get a bit of extra sharpness onto my chisel. Okay, fitting the bridge at the moment. Uh, people ask me why I lick the bridge uh, or the timber, and it's actually wet timber. It, like you can actually cut wet timber way finer than dry timber. So I'm just cutting off tiny, tiny, thin slithers. Okay, I'm just going to mark this in. That's all good to get started. Anyway, I'm going to go for lunch. Okay, well, I really like riding my bike normally for lunch, but today it's raining, so I'm driving. <laughs> Okay, I'm back from lunch, so I'm just going to plane this bridge to the correct thickness. Literally gonna just let this settle for a bit 
I'm gonna do a bit of extra work. I've literally, I have two Pierre Lamont master orders at the moment that I have to finish, like the instruments. And so I still have to set them up. I have to plane the fingerboards. Uh, I've made the bridges for two and we've done the pegs. But uh, yeah, I, so I'm gonna be quite busy because I literally have to get three ready but there's someone else inquiring about one they're really popular instruments and uh, I have players all around the world playing them so, so I'm actually gonna make another video uh, about telling some of the stories of the different players that are playing my instruments around the world especially the Pierre Lamont master um, because there's some really wonderful stories from all over the world it's crazy it is so cool okay so the weather just improved so i'm just going for a quick bike ride and then i'll do some more work a little bit later this is one of my favorite bits small bit of rainforest in our botanical garden. Here's the performing arts complex. Where, that's where two set violin are going to be performing soon and I've seen a lot of amazing uh, violinists there. Everyone from Ray Chen, Maxim Vengerov, Stefan Grappelli, Nigel Kennedy, Joshua Bell, Stephen Isselis. One cellist I really want to see is Yo-Yo Ma. He's just not only an amazing cellist, but uh, he's also just, he just seems like an amazing guy. Okay, that was a nice bike ride and a nice trip down memory lane. It's actually quite late in the afternoon and I'm pretty much going to call it quit soon. Um, I will plane two fingerboards. I've got uh, some beautiful Pierre Lamont master violins uh, that I'm setting up at the moment. Like I said, they were ordered um, already, so I'll probably plane two of the fingerboards this afternoon and I'll do the other two tomorrow morning. And uh, once I finish planing the fingerboards, I will call it a day. This is one of my Pierre Lamont masters. So, so obviously they're handmade, so each instrument is individual. And uh, so when players buy the instrument, I always send a photo because they're individual. They're really beautiful. I mean, I've hand picked them and I've, I've had them made and I've given very specific instructions. But I do have slight variations in the varnish. So this one, for example, is a slightly lighter one. Uh, really beautiful, beautiful timber. And then I also have some slightly darker ones like this one. Uh, they were also made at different times. Um, this one's got a fiery scroll, look at that. But, um, but you know, so they're unique and, uh, and a little bit different. So I always give players one or two choices when they buy of, of maybe a lighter or a darker color. And I'll send a photo. So they buy it online on my website. So a player will buy it on my website, but then I, um, I'll send the photo before I um, send the instrument. Um, I'll send the photo of one or two instruments that I have here at the moment so that they can pick the the one they like the look of best. They sound amazing, they all sound amazing. They've got that beautiful, rich sound, easy to play on, so they're really wonderful. because they're handmade each instrument looks slightly different which is good you don't want everyone having the exact same look on their instrument that's just boring all right so I will start planing this fingerboard you've seen me plane a whole lot of fingerboards so I probably won't show you all that much so I will just do this work I'll show you how what they look like finished 
and uh, and then we'll have a quick chat before I leave. All right, that's all done. The uh, pegs are done. The whole instrument, I have to give a little bit of a clean. I have to let the, the glue of the nut dry, so I can't put the strings on today. I've already got the bridges ready for the instrument. The bridge is here. It's all done and carved and beautiful. There's the one for the other violin. Yeah, but uh, I'm pretty much, I've got to call it quits for today. Um, the cello I'll check over tomorrow morning. Actually, I'll give it a very quick play just so you can hear it. <laughs> a nice cello it's uh, my Garibaldi cello um, it, I still need to do a lot of adjustment to the sound post it's a little bit sharp at the moment so I will do some adjustments to to get that deeper richer sound out anyway thanks for watching guys I really enjoy sharing my life with you guys I love my work a lot of people don't can't say that and I'm actually very grateful that uh, I I do get to do something I really enjoy. I didn't always enjoy every aspect, so it's uh, it's been a journey, or it is a journey. So I've also taken some things out of my working life. Uh, I, for example, I don't do much work for unenthusiastic players. <laughs> I, I love working with enthusiastic string players of all levels. Uh, you know, I love those kids coming in you know, sometimes five-year-olds, six-year-olds with big shiny eyes and they're buying their first violin. And then, um, you know, I'm often part of their lives all the way till university and beyond. Uh, that's something I really love. I do help a lot of hobby string players. So players that may have played as a child then have taken it up again in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And then I've got a few adult newbies, like total beginners. And all those guys are so much fun because there's just so much enthusiasm, a willingness to learn, an openness, and a lot of people just love the music. So that's so much fun to work with. I also work with a bunch of professionals, uh, uni students, professionals, uh, hobby players at really high levels, you know, like there some string players, some of my clients uh, got to a very high level of playing. They played with the youth orchestra and uh, but then went to university studying all sorts of things from medicine, engineering, psychology, law, um, and various other degrees and uh, but have kept up their playing routine and still love playing now so I get a lot of joy out of that I get a lot of joy out of enthusiastic players that's that's where my fun is uh, you know that's the thing I really enjoy if you're not enthusiastic um, or if you're a mum or a dad of a child who doesn't really want to play but you have big dreams for them probably not my kind of client but anyway, I do get a lot of joy out of it. I don't like the stress, like when I get too busy, but luckily uh, I have a very, very good manager that manages my time, so that's really wonderful. And she takes care of me to make sure that I get to do the things that I wanna do. Anyway, it's been nice chatting to you. Um, so today I, kind of did three to four major things 
first one was working on my violin. I set up that cello. My son had already done the pegs on that cello, so they work really beautifully. He's very good at doing pegs. In the morning, remember, I, I'm putting together this flood cello, so I'm just bit by bit moving forward on that. And then I am setting up some Pierre Lamont Master Violins for some players who have ordered them already. Um, one is in the United States and one is here in Brisbane. I'm going to do a video about some of the players that have ordered the Pierre Lamont Master Instruments because there are a lot of really inspirational stories from my clients and, and I love to share them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Keep making beautiful music. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys as a community. And I'll see you guys next time. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe so you find out every time I post a new video. You may also want to um, hit that little bell uh, so that you get reminded each time I post a new video. And Please like, if you, if you like this video, hit the like button because it helps me. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!